This is a story of how a 23-year-old American activist was crushed by an Israeli military bulldozer in Gaza. How despite numerous eyewitness testimonies, the Israeli military ruled her death an accident. And how, now almost 20 years later, her parents are still seeking justice. This is a story of Rachel Corey. At midday on 16th of March 2003, the phone started ringing at the home of Cindy and Craig Corey in Charlotte, North Carolina. Whilst her husband was busy with the laundry, Cindy picked up the phone, unaware of how life-changing the next few words would be. It's Rachel. Cindy had just been told that her 23-year-old daughter, her youngest, had been crushed to death under an Israeli military bulldozer while trying to prevent the demolition of a Palestinian home in Rafah, Gaza. They rounded up about 150 men, uh, held them under a sniper tower, and, and shot around them to contain the men, the farmers in the area. What I'm witnessing here is a very systematic um, destruction of people's ability to survive, um, and that is incredibly horrifying. Carrying a loudspeaker and wearing an orange fluorescent jacket, American activist Rachel Corey headed for a protest against demolition of Palestinian houses and Rafat refugee camp. It was nearly three years into the Second Intifada, a Palestinian uprising against Israeli occupation. Rachel had been in Gaza for two months after becoming involved with the International Solidarity Movement, or ISM, a Palestinian-led group of international activists dedicated to protesting against Israeli human rights abuses. In Rafah, Rachel stood in front of the home of the Nasrallah family and knelt to her knees 20 meters ahead of a Caterpillar D9R armored bulldozer. Now this was quite common practice during protests. The young activist was attempting to disrupt the Israeli military's demolitions, an operation deemed by human rights groups as collective punishment of Palestinians. According to eyewitnesses, as the bulldozer got closer, it pushed a mound of earth in front of its blade. The heat began to overtake Cory, so she stood up to climb the mountain soil. Rachel's fellow activists screamed for the driver, an Israeli soldier, to stop. But the driver continued and ran over the American student twice. Yeah, we'd been out there for several hours on March 16th of 2003. Uh, we'd been for weeks. We'd been doing this, blocking these bulldozers with with our bodies. And um, on this day in particular, we've been out there for about two and a half hours, blocking these same two bulldozers over and over again. And eventually, just one of the drivers apparently got tired of stopping and very intentionally drove over Rachel, crushed her to death. I was sitting about 30 feet away, blocking another bulldozer at the time, um, and watched it it run over her and then back off of her again. Rachel died soon after being taken to Rafa Hospital from suffocation. One of the problems with this whole trial, and right from the beginning, uh, you know, Prime Minister Sharon promised President Bush a thorough, credible, and transparent investigation. It's still the opinion of our government as well as our family that that never happened. Rachel's parents and other activists blamed the Israeli military for the death. The army pledged to conduct a thorough investigation and report to then-President George W. Bush. But the IDF closed the investigation without delivering a comprehensive report. Instead, they refuted the parents' claims and accused Rachel and her fellow activists of illegal and dangerous behavior. Contrary to allegations, Ms. Corey was not run over by a bulldozer, but sustained injuries caused by earth and debris which fell on her during a bulldozer operation. At the time of the incident, Ms. Corey was standing behind an earth mound and therefore obscured from the bulldozer crew's view. Israel's ruling was criticized by human rights groups, including Amnesty International and B'Tselem. In their struggle to secure accountability, Cindy and Craig Corey filed a lawsuit in 2005 against the Texas-based Caterpillar Incorporation, along with four other Palestinian families whose relatives had been killed or injured. 
The claimants argued that Caterpillar bulldozers funded by American taxpayers and supplied to Israel as part of the yearly $3.3 billion aid from Washington were implicated in war crimes and extrajudicial killings. Since 1967, CAT Inc. has been providing equipment to the Israeli military and in more recent years has been at the center of boycott calls. According to campaigners, CAT Inc. is responsible for demolishing the homes of tens of thousands of Palestinians, as well as destroying ancient olive groves and roads in the West Bank. In 2007, the Corrie's case was dismissed by the court on political question grounds and therefore did not rule on the merits of the suit. In other words, as the bulldozers were paid for by the US government as part of its aid to Israel, the court could not rule in favour of the plaintiffs without questioning and therefore undermining the United States foreign policy towards Israel. From the moment the Israeli government started talking to our embassy, and to our family in 2003. The story changed and it changed and it changed and it changed and it changed again. Three years later, the Corries tried again. This time, they sued the IDF and Israel's defense ministry. But in 2012, Israeli district court judge Oded Gershon ruled against the parents, clearing the driver of any wrongdoing and blaming Rachel for putting herself in harm's way. Since 2002, Israel has killed and severely injured 10 foreign activists belonging to the ISM, including 21-year-old British photojournalist Tom Herndl, who was shot dead by an Israeli sniper in Gaza, and 21-year-old American art student Emily Henekowitz, who lost her left eye when she was struck by a tear canister while protesting near the Kalandia checkpoint. It's now been over two decades since Rachel Corey was crushed by a cat bulldozer in Gaza. Although Rachel's parents were unable to hold the Israeli military to account, the couple set up the Rachel Corey Foundation for Peace and Justice and continue to advocate against US funding to Israel. Rachel was a US citizen with Palestinian blood. This was a slogan frequently seen on posters honoring Rachel in Gaza and the occupied territories. Today, the activist's death continues to symbolize those fighting and standing in solidarity to the Palestinian plight.